Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this Unturned Map Editor tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your very own airdrop. So, uh, let's start out by going into our test map here. And actually, a majority of making this airdrop is not actually inside of the Map Editor. But I'll show you um, how to initially place one down. So, uh, to start us off, we want to go to Nodes and um, the airdrop is one of the nodes so if you click through here um, you should eventually get to one called airdrop and it'll give you this nice large arrow here and this is essentially the location that the airdrop planes will be dropping your airdrop so we can pretty much put this wherever uh, I just need to make sure I can get to it from the ground so we can check what's inside of it so let's put it like right in front of the hospital here alright so as soon as you place it down one other thing pops up and it's the spawn ID right here in the corner. Now this is supposed to correspond to some sort of spawn table you have created. Now sadly at this point uh, it doesn't work with the spawn tables you can create um, inside of the actual spawns area. I actually tried to create one. Um, I tried to create uh, spawn table zero named it airdrop and I had some good things in there. Well this actually doesn't work anymore and you know I think it worked in the past but uh, Nelson's been changing a few things up. So it's a good thing I'm doing this video now. So we can't use that sort of spawn table. And we actually need to have a spawn ID here. Uh, spawn ID is actually, spawn ID 0 is actually a table that has nothing in it. So we need to make sure we have an actual table. So we're going to get rid of this uh, beacon. And we're actually going to create a table using the new method. And you can actually create your own or use an existing table this way. All right, so in order to create our own spawn table, besides the spawn tables that you actually create inside of the map editor you have to go to workshop and spawn tables and actually you can now create all of your spawn tables inside of this menu now back in the day when this first came out I showed you guys sort of how to do this how to look through it but there's a few things that have actually changed there's two new buttons raw and new so you can actually create your own spawn tables now using this uh, interface so let's say we want to check out some existing ones. All we have to do is type the number of the one we want to check out and press view. And then we can scroll through and see what it actually has in it. Now this is a uh, table one. It's named Beacon. Um, and it has all these different guns in it. You can see the weights, uh, what percentage there is a chance of getting them. And you can actually set custom weight numbers here and calculate your own weights by pressing apply weight. So this is really cool. There's tons of tables out there. It goes up to like, I think it goes up to around 600, maybe just above. So I was figuring, well, if we're going to make our own, let us start at 700. So I actually made my own at 700. And it's pretty easy. We'll add a few things to it. But this is my table here. And as you guys can see, it's named asset underscore 700. I didn't set a custom name for it. I'm actually not quite sure how to set a custom name for it. There's nothing really in here to do that. But it doesn't really matter because you can do pretty much everything that you need to do within this table. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to actually add items to this table. So it's pretty simple. It's pretty much like exactly like doing it inside of the editor. Um, I'm going to be using uh, unturned bunker here and have the ID list for everything and we're just gonna add maybe one or two things just to show you how it's done so let's add like an Avenger to our list uh, it's 1021 so we're gonna remember that ID and we gotta put 1021 right here and then you press add asset now it should pull up the name if it didn't you got the wrong ID and that's pretty much all you really need to do to add something so let's add one more and then we're gonna give them some weights so let's add the Chryscrack 1039 all right so that's pretty easy and as you guys can see it also shows their rarity so cries correct is a common rarity Avenger is a rare I think that's a rare or it's an uncommon I can't remember either way actually that's uncommon and that's rare yeah so now we actually need to set the weights so right now these weights are kind of messed up because uh, you know we haven't actually put a weight number in here so Essentially how it works is the larger the number, the more likely it is going to be chosen inside of your airdrop. 
So uh, let's just say, since these are only pistols and they're not that valuable, let's give them the highest weight. So we've got a bunch of 10s, a bunch of 20s. We're going to give these ones 30s. Now, in order to actually apply the weight, as you can see, it's not changed yet. We actually need to hit the Apply Weights button. And it should do all the math for you. And now, as you guys can see, uh, there's a 15.8% chance that you'll get the Avenger and the Cries Correct. And it adjusted all the rest of them as well. So, you know, it does the math for you. And this is pretty nice. So let's say we want to remove one. So let's say the cries crack is, you know, kind of common. We don't really want it. All we have to do is press the remove button and it's gone. Now, uh, it looks like it sort of bunched the weights into the Peacemaker one. Um, if you do that, I would suggest reapplying the weights and it'll balance it back out for you. So as it is, uh, we have these weapons inside of our airdrop. Now, there is one other table up here that I've sort of been ignoring. Um, this is the root area. Now, the root part pretty much says, are there any other tables I want to also use inside of this table? So let's look up uh, table number 10. So we're going to view this. This is Arena Ammunition Military. I'm guessing he used it for a military map. It's got, um, you know, all this type of guns and weapons and stuff. So let's say we want to use uh, this already created table in our table 700. So let's go back to our table 700. All we have to do to make it use those items as well in our, pre our made table is just put 10 up here and add spawn. That will add this table to our own table. All right, so once we add that in there, pretty much there will now be a chance of this table actually being used inside of our own table so we're actually going to get rid of that we don't want to use that um, this is pretty much all we need we've set our own custom items here and just to show you guys what the other other buttons look like the new button is for creating it so if you want to create your own um, put a unique ID up here and press new and it should give you a fresh start alright if you want to create or if you want to view the raw data all you have to do is hit the raw button and it'll show you in a, a different format something like this and this sort of shows you like uh, the asset.dat file for your actual spawn table. So somewhere in the game files there is an actual like file that you can see within the file system that will actually have this data inside it. So if you guys want to search through that, uh, it should be maybe inside a bundle, something like that. You can find this and maybe edit it by hand as well. Or you can just use the interface. Either way really works. So let's go back into our editor and let's go back into our test map and make our airdrop use our custom table. Let's go back into nodes. Um, we actually do have the airdrop saved here even though it says location. This is uh, an airdrop still. It's sort of a bug I kind of found while doing this. If you click this it'll go to safe zone and all the rest but uh, for some reason it saves the last one you're on regardless of the name. So pretty much we have created our airdrop here and all we have to do is put the spawn table ID we want to use. Now make sure you save this before you test it out in game and let us go test it. All right, so here we are uh, in map. Um, last thing I was doing was testing NPCs and let's run over to this hospital and see if we can spawn an airdrop. Now for those of you who don't know, uh, there's a way you can force spawn an airdrop. All you have to do is do forward slash airdrop. and press enter. Now this will take a while. Okay, so there it is. Um, it came from this direction. I think the direction is slightly randomized and it really depends on I guess where you place it. And so you should have a plane that when it gets over your area actually drops the package. Now um, I'm gonna give myself some binoculars so we can watch it on its way down. This will take a while. Uh, I've, it drops it at uh, the very very top of the skybox so depending on how high up your land is, it will take longer. This one is pretty low, so this will take a while, but uh, we can just sort of see it floating down. All right, another thing I want to mention uh, before it gets down here, sort of off topic, for those of you who have been keeping up with my NPC series, um, it will be really hard for me to continue and make a successful quest video. And that is because, uh, I may have mentioned this in chat or before in another video, um, you, we can't create as of yet we can't create conditions and conditions are actually needed to successfully create a quest so maybe soon whenever Nelson implements so that we can actually create our own condition I will be able to do it until then I'm afraid I won't 
be able to actually successfully create a quest for you guys. So uh, let's get back to our airdrop. It is successfully arrived and it looks like, you know, it's got this nice sort of red flare thing coming off of it and it's sort of like a normal chest. So you just got to press F and we'll go inside it and look at what we have here. Now, uh, if you guys remember, all of these items were in there. We've got our Avenger here. We've got Calling Card, Timberwolf, Bulldog, and Yuri. And it looks like, you know, it, it essentially fit about six items in here. Now, it will try to fit six items in here about every time. It'll sort of fill up the storage as best it can. But if your items are too large, it won't actually be able to. So just a warning, when you're filling these airdrops with whatever you want to put in them, you know, keep in mind you only have, let's say, it's about 7 by 7 area of space to work with. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're making them. But they do hold a lot of space. And pretty much, they work just like normal. Uh, you can take items out of them. And when you're done with them, you can actually damage them. And they will disappear. So anyway, guys, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to create your own airdrop. Um, thank you guys for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And subscribe if you want to see some more. I will see you all later.